who would have thought that the biggest move slash blindside would occur in this episode all because the tribe happened to pick the wrong person to sit out in a reward challenge. <laughs> <laughs> when has someone sitting out of a challenge ever affected an episode or a season like this? Like, that is really unprecedented. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, like, it was totally fair, given how it was a 4-4 <laughs> tribe split, and that tribe happened to be up in the numbers. Just... <laughs> Oh man, who could have predicted this, but I'm sure the producers loved it. <laughs> and I kind of, um, did, but I do have one big issue that I want to complain about, but I'll do that at the end. So that reward challenge, um, nice challenge, they were neck and neck for a while, but you could tell based on the verbal cues that, um, Aaron was gonna land that shot, because if you've watched enough Survivor, you, um, learn, uh, how to tell based on musical cues a lot of the times when something will happen. Oh sure, occasionally they throw you for a loop, but the majority of times you're going to be correct. The same thing goes for the complaint I've got a little later. Um, let's see here. Elaine and having her um, task actually be um, grab an advantage at the challenge or lose her vote. Yeah, it's a way of mixing things up, and I really do like how they're giving Rob and Sandra are giving um, these newbies all kinds of different tasks. You've got memorization, you've got the stealth when it's not at a challenge, you've got stealth at a challenge, or you've got something that directly involves Rob and Sandra. Like, they're going all over the map here. This is really creative. Good job on production, along with Rob and Sandra throwing their own uh, twists in there. Sure, this time it wasn't an idol, but doesn't have to be an idol. Although I was a little bit surprised that the um, block bit was um, prevent a person from voting, because really that's just the steal the vote advantage, except you don't go up two, the other side simply goes down one. I thought it would be sort of like an idol, just that only gets one vote instead of all of them, but I guess the way that they did it makes um, more sense because... Well, this uh, in-between makes a lot more sense than the idol in-between thing that I uh, just explained to you. Hmm? Um, and then... Uh, Jamal and Jack's bit, that was rather touching, because as a uh, straight right male who isn't religious, but that's second best, um, I totally get how people that aren't part of that demographic, you know, feel so inferior, and like, am I a victim of right privileges? Well, yeah, my parents have a lot of good, um, income. I coincidentally didn't have to worry about um, taking out loans when I was getting my bachelor's degree, though um, I'm probably gonna have to do that if I go for a master's degree. There might be a loophole to that, but that, that'll involve a couple years of my life. I won't explain to you what that is. That's way too personal. But, you know, it hits home because there's all kinds of people who have to suffer through all kinds of problems because, oh, they're different and they don't fit into this small box of the 1% and whatnot, even though there's tons of which black or Asian people out there. Come on. Just, I do feel for him, and I was really impressed at how, while he was bothered by it, he expressed it in just such a way that really helped Jack open his eyes, because Jack admitted in his confessional before Jamal started explaining this, he was just making a tiny joke. And it just failed. I mean, like, my dad will do that, but he only makes those jokes to people that he knows, and if it causes a problem, he'll apologize instantly, but... 
totally different situation, and I'm real glad that those two were able to make amends, even though I could have sworn that... The one tribe, the Vokai tribe, went to Tribal Council. They were on opposite ends of the vote. I could be wrong on that. Because there was a third person that was left out. It might have been Jack, but I don't remember now. Hmm. It's nice to see a personal moment like this that doesn't come up. And given how this cast is uh, more diverse, although I haven't totally noticed that because... Unlike Big Brother, Survivor makes a lot less of a big deal when there's a gay contestant on the show, because according to um, one of the articles I've been reading for Dalton Ross, it seems like there's free gay people on this season, and I uh, don't know who they are. Then again, I didn't know Ron was gay from last season until um, the loved ones visit, so... And then they didn't even mention that Jeff Varno was um, gay back in Australia now, back even though I would not be t surprised at all if he was out at that point. And I think Mitchell was gay too. Could be wrong, but hmm? They kind of downplay it, which is both good and bad, because the way Big Brother does it, it's really over the top. But here, they could be using that message like they did here, even though it's just between two people who actually were not at odds at all, and it just happened to be a bad moment. Hmm. But I'm glad that they were able to mend the fence, so if anything happens between them later, it's not going to be a problem. Right. Um... The Immunity Challenge, I actually was kind of surprised that um, Orange was able to catch up and get it, but I'm like, this is going to make things a lot more interesting. Let's see what um, Aaron and Missy are going to do, because like with um, Jason, I was under the impression that they were going to flip and turn on Elaine, even though, get this, Elaine wouldn't have gone anyway, because according to Jason... Aaron was actually the target, so they were going to use the fact that he was flipping and then take him out, so, which I find to be really clever. They weren't really completely on board with him drawing rocks, but they had reached a level of confidence in the plan that they could easily bluff that, which is what they did at Tribal Council. But... Elaine getting um, that um, vote block seemed to fully convince um, Aaron and Missy that they weren't um, going to uh, flip, although I do think that they were considering doing it for a while there, but I'd rather that when they get, went into Tribal Council, even though we had that um, active whispering, I think they had decided that they were definitely going to um, vote out Jason. And this is the part of this episode that I hate. Not the fact that Jason left. I'm okay with this blind side, along with the fact that... Because he had recovered enough in the standings with other people that... They were over the bad things that happened with him early on the season, which was good. Duh. And Jason even admitted he and Aaron are actually good friends. No hard feelings. And I really appreciate how... Over the last few seasons, there's very little bad blood that's going on. People understand it's a game. That's nice. Uh, especially since it looks like a Jamal might actually um, go out in a nice way, at least based on where he's standing right now. But here's the thing that um, I don't get. Why on earth was everyone on tenterhooks... As to who would be voted out when Jeff was pulling out the last vote. Even Sandra, she didn't know. Uh, do you got... Uh, Sandra, did you not watch your old season? Because here's the thing. If Jeff has an odd number of votes, and then he pulls out enough votes back to back to back, or further than that, so where one contestant is one vote away from getting voted out and needs, at a minimum, all but one of the remaining votes to be for another person to tie, or every single vote to be for another person in order to survive. And then, he pulls out a vote for another person. 
Odds are like 9 out of 10 that the remaining votes are for the person that has received the median vote, for lack of a better term. Sandra, this happened twice in your season. Candice, Ruba got three votes, she gets five. Danielle, Ruba gets three votes, Danielle gets four. Philip gets five votes in Redemption Island, Mike gets six. Do you guys not watch the show? Honestly, like the moment Jason got the second vote, I didn't even need to really know what Missy and Aaron did. Nine times out of ten, they voted for Jason. Oh, yeah. And then once the third vote came out, I knew for sure it was him. Just, ugh. Could you not have done two votes for Jason, three votes for Elaine, and then done the remaining votes for Jason? That would have made it so much more interesting. Or oh, even better, Jason Elaine, Jason Elaine, Jason Elaine, eh? Because that's what you did when Cliff was booted, although you saved the last two votes for him. At the end, just, uh, come on! Why were you guys surprised? I get it, you're out there, you're not thinking with a clear head. But, as a fan, well, super fan technically, especially now that I've seen literally every episode of the American version now, and I even rewatched HVV, that was underwhelming, uh, because they had given it away. <sighs> right. Though Rob does make a good point, suck it up, Buttercup, because he's been on um, the receiving and initiating end of blind signs like this. He stabs it to Lex, and then Jerry um, stabs it to him, he knew that Jerry had flipped on him when he walked into that tribal council because you know it, and he was way more angry at Coach because Jerry gets up to hugs him, he hugs her with no problem. Coach tries to hug him, you're a little man. Hmm? Right. Well, we got one more episode before the merge, hoping that it's a good one. And then let's see if this season has a change in tone. Uh, 